How many people other than Jen were telling you that something needs to change? Zero. She's the only one? Why do you think that is? I think people were afraid of me. I think people didn't want, family didn't want to say it, and family didn't know. I don't think my family knew. And I think I hide it, I hid it a lot from people. And I know my brothers did never bring it up because it's a mirror. It's a mirror for them. So when Jen did it, it was obviously out of love, out of strength, out of stubbornness. And uh, it, it was a shock to me to hear it straight up, hard hitting, something's wrong with you. Do you think there's anybody else out there that would have made you start looking for answers, looking for help? Yeah, there were people I would have listened to. Who? Uh, my former boss at the company we helped co-found. Had he said something, you know, just knowing who I am, I would have taken it as a work thing. Had he said something directly, you know, I found out later he aired out things to Jen, who would air out things to me, who I thought was coming from her. And then later it was like, no, he was saying those to me, to you. And I'm like, well, what, what the hell's wrong with that dude, right? Why would he say something to me? Man up. Right? I'm not going to punch you. And if I do, it won't hurt that long, right? Just tell me. <laughs> I mean, just man up and tell your friends yeah. they need some help, you know? But we don't want to hold that mirror up because then we would have to go get help. And it happens a lot with people that reach out for help. Immediately they're connected to help. And then they freak out. And then they don't make the calls. And then I have to cut them away. And then you get the hateful emails about how you're, you're, you're a quack and your system doesn't work. I'm like, no, nothing works if you don't do it. You know, a bicycle lay there forever unless you pedal the damn thing. So the accountability's not there. The awareness of I need help, you called, you emailed, but the accountability's not there. They don't want to admit it. They don't want to put in the work. And so they shy away from it and make all the excuses. You know, I'm fine. It's quack. I'm, I'm going to go help other people now. I'm like, oh, no, you know. I think helping veterans is what will help me. And I'm like, okay, I started out in a soup kitchen. It opened my eyes to other people and humans that needed help. And I knew I can't go help people, right? I wouldn't take advice, marriage advice, from somebody who was never in a relationship. I wouldn't take financial advice from somebody who was broke all the time, right? So I wouldn't want another veteran taking advice from me or any other veteran that's broken at the time. So I would ask other people who are helping other people or want to help other people to get help first, right? Sweet. And then find out if you have a problem. Because if you're telling yourself you don't, and you're all fit as a fiddle, you're probably not. I have a room of 300 people, and I'll be talking on stage, and how many people have a perfect relationship? No hand ever goes up. Okay, how many of you are in marriage counseling? Two hands might go up. All right, for the other 298, why aren't you in counseling? Why are you going to wait till it's broken to maintain something, right? It's a lot harder to get back up, so... Start now. Just do the check-ins and make sure your relationship's in the right way and make sure your head's in the right space. That's good advice.